Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I'm here with the GTR 50 by Atal Design Concept. I am going to run through the stage 6 effects of this car as well as discuss a little bit about my observations relating to tuning and using this car in live. This video and this opportunity to test a fully maxed GTR 50 is brought to you by the Spoon Cat 6737. Thank you, Spooncat, for helping me out here, giving me access to test this car while it's fully built. All right, now let's talk about stage six effects. Before we get there, let's first set this car back to stage five. At stage five only, it is not a slow car, but it's also not one of the fastest cars. Um, it kind of falls in the range of decent, but not superb, meaning certainly it makes decent points enough when you get the final jump here to make a 9.467 baseline and we'll use that as the baseline the problem with this car is of course running to get that 0 to 60 time um, as shown based on uh, how the car is tuned is not as easy as it looks so first of all the launch point is all the way down near the red line which means you have to launch really late and then the issue is if it doesn't launch with a zero RPM drop, what you're going to get is you're going to get a wheel spin start. And then you have to judge when to shift to second and hit nitrous uh, because it generally likes second and nitrous. The biggest issue for me is I can't hit that zero to 60 or the zero to 100. That is theoretically possible. And therefore, I'm not going to hit that, uh, nor am I hitting the top speed. So all this kind of plays out together to make this car a little difficult to drive before you get to the final upgrade levels. But that's just the start. So know that as of just stage five full fusion and with individual stage sixes, it's not the easiest to drive to get to where you need to be. That being said, let's start looking at engine stage six. Engine actually is a pretty decent stage six for this car, adding a decent amount of EVO jump, even though the uh, overall performance point jump isn't that great but it is more than enough to make this car uh, much faster than what it is when you get it at stage five. So let me see if I can't find the sweet spot here for the points. I believe it does get to a pretty decent point level. We saw uh, 1810 right there. So that's a 9.085 theoretically, uh, but again, Theoretically, also relies on this. This is the hard part. I don't quite get how I'm going to get that. Um, so I'm going to try different ways to try to get it. But the reality is that it's spinning tires in first. And if you let first run longer, it doesn't necessarily make it uh, a better 0 to 60. So let's see how this is going to play out. All right. So I let it run to almost 50 mile per hour in first. And then I hit second in nitrous. Just as a way to kind of test if this will be better. I doubt it. Um, that is one of the things about this car is that 0 to 60 in theory is great. In practice is a lot harder. And if you can't hit the 0 to 60, you're not going to hit that. So it becomes one of those I can't quite drive it right situations with this car. All right. Let's move on and look at the next stage six. So up to this point, um, without figuring out how to exactly drive the car perfectly, I'm not hitting dyno, and therefore this is not going to be the most competitive car when used in various things like live or even uh, even worse showdown. But showdown, you really don't want to bring this car in unless it's fully maxed. Now, turbo naturally isn't going to be as strong as uh, engine, and that's not really surprising, but we can't get some more points out of it by putting it to a different final drive, which gives it a 9.37A in theory. I'm going to take one more run. But once again, my feeling is that it's going to be a tough run. So running turbo as the stage six, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to get out of first a lot quicker. And then uh, it didn't see nitrous didn't activate on time that time. So that's going to hurt it. So if you jump out of first too quick, nitrous doesn't click. If you jump out of first too late, your 060 is still going to stink. 
so there's going to be a balance there somewhere. That was a terrible run. And again, the dinos is 9.378, 1.139, 0-60 in theory, which I'm still trying to figure out how to get. Now, let's do this again, except maybe this time I am going to hit nitrous in third. Okay, just to see if it helps. I don't think it will. It will help a little bit with the top speed, but ultimately I don't think it's going to help that much with the time. So 0 to 60 is not great, but better. Same here. And the time is better, 9.456. But here's the sad part. That's about stage 5 only's dyno. So okay. So again, turbo, not having a whole lot of luck shifting it. If you know a better shift pattern and you, you can get it consistently, by all means, use it, share it, let people know. I am not getting the shift pattern down with this car much. Obviously, there is a folding max shift pattern that I've seen, which doesn't always apply to a less than folding max car. All right. Next stage six, we have 9.434 in theory without tuning. And with tuning, it should be able to come close, if not beat turbo, although right now it's not. Uh, let me see what's going on here. All right, there's a nice jump there. 9.395, um, I think turbo may still have this compared to... Now, another option might be that I can lower this, lower that, and see if I can get find a sweet spot with the upgrades here in an alternative way with the 2.0 final drive. No. So it's still looking at something like a 2.24 being one of the top numbers. I'm not going to run this because I have a feeling it's not going to be any better than turbo for me. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the next one. Moving right along, we're moving into nitrous. Now nitrous should be helpful because it adds a lot of duration. It adds points here. It adds a little bit of point there, but we haven't tuned it. So there should be more points available in nitrous just by going here. And there it is, a few more points. Then the question is, can I get a nice jump going down in final drive? Obviously, there is a jump uh, right around here, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22. 2 nope, 2.21. We'll take that and let's look at that, 9.181. Not the best time, uh, but not bad. It's pretty close to what engine had, but I think engine might have edged it out. So let's see. Oh, well, I know engine definitely edged it out because it was a 9.0 uh, on the dyno, but I couldn't run it very well. All right, that one, notice, changed the launch point. That's the first time I got that launch point. It's not a zero RPM drop, but it went right to 4K. That should have helped my run. Let's take a look. 9.183, much closer to dyno than I ever gotten with the other ones so far because of that drop. I'm not going to try to duplicate it here yet. Let's move on to the next stage six. I have a feeling some other stage sixes may very well get you the zero RPM drop uh, from a perfect launch. Of course, that's assuming I can get a perfect launch. All right, moving right along, we're going to look at body. Body uh, looks like it's going to add some points on both ends, and therefore it should be a pretty strong stage six. Body traditionally is anyway for most T5 cars, but it doesn't always come out on top, although in some cases it comes pretty close. All right, let's see if... Okay, let's put it here for that 1774. Then we'll play with this and see if it'll go up or it's only going to go down. All right. So it looks like it's not so easy to get it to go higher than that 1774, which is a 9.087. This is almost identical to what engine can do, theoretically, right? So engine and body right now coming out on top, but almost identical to each other, which is good. But again, how does it drive? Do they drive differently when it's engine versus, oh, look at that. Definitely differently because the 
again, the launch point now jumps to 4,000. Um, and I have a feeling when we start looking at combos, that's going to come into play as well. 9.100 on a 9.087, one of the best runs I've had overall. Um, different than just engine, just turbo, just intake, which I didn't run, but nitrous and body both allows for a better needle drop. Okay, now we're starting to get to tire. This should be interesting. Tire with its extra grip looks like it does quite a bit here, uh, numbers wise, and that extra grip may trigger the drop that I'm actually looking for. But again, let's go ahead and get some more work out of these. Uh, let's play with the final numbers. So I'm able to go for a lower top speed, but it's giving me a higher set of numbers here as I edge this up. I'm pretty sure I saw 65, but if I don't, I'm not going to waste too much time and we'll just settle with 264. All right, we'll stick with 264. 9.161, um, definitely slower than body and engine, but slightly better on the dyno than nitrous even. Okay, let's take a look. Now, I did not get the zero RPM drop. Very well could be because I didn't launch late enough. Um, nor did I get even the 4,000 RPM drop, which would have been helpful as well. Because anytime I get that drop is when I get a better run. When you don't get the drop, you don't seem to get that 0 to 60, and therefore you don't get the best run. All right. Not going to waste too much effort on this yet. Let's move on. We can always test those things when we get to the combinations. So that was tire. Tire, again, theoretically isn't bad, uh, but from actual driving standpoint, isn't as easy to get close to the dyno time as body and nitrous. Okay, now we're up to transmission. Transmission, uh, traditionally being one that requires slightly more aggressive final drive, uh, but in this case, looks like it'll do fine with slightly lower final drive too. Okay, let's see if we can't get it to the top score here. Let's see if I can get, no, nope, looks like 2122 is where it's the best. 9.112 pushes it kind of in between tire and engine now. So it it's another one that's pretty strong. So actually this car has pretty decent stage sixes being four of them are relatively close, uh, all being pretty strong. Actually five of them. Oh. I finally got that zero RPM drop. Maybe I was letting go of the needle too early. Um, that is what I was looking for, but I was so shocked by it, I didn't actually hit the uh, nitrous on time. That being said, if you look, look at the run. Anytime you get that zero RPM drop, you have a chance of getting the run exactly um, where you want it to, which is at least on dyno, if not slightly under, right? So let's try again. That worked out pretty good. This time I need to keep an eye on the needle. Oh, and I didn't get it this time. So I have to let go even later. So you're literally letting go of the needle at the very, very last part of the countdown. Um, so I'm going to do one more and see what happens. Let's go ahead and do one more. Simply because I got that RPM drop, which is um, what I'm hoping to get again. Um, so let's see if I can't get this. No, now I'm not getting it. So again, that frustrates you when you're trying to do something and it just doesn't want to cooperate. Okay. Now, without that, naturally, um, using the wheel spin start, you're going to run slower. Nothing I can do about that. Let's go ahead and move on. All right. So again, if you can time that release right to get that zero RPM drop and then you can launch out of it, 
you'll get a better zero to 60 and actually ultimately a better run. So that are, that kind of finishes all the stage sixes. Now, we know some of the strongest is nitrous, engine, okay, and transmission, actually, and then tire and body are all strong. So you don't really have super weak stage sixes here, but let's put three of these guys in that's relatively strong, and then we'll tune it again to the best we can. Now, with stage six nitrous and everything, chances are this is going to be your best setting. Okay, 0, 100, 2.0, 6.3. Now, I noticed that Natural Motion's putting more and more cars out that will end up at 2.0, 0, 100 very quickly. The reason for that, in my belief, is that they're trying to avoid you using uh, a grip-based down tune like we see with a lot of older cars. Uh, that is constantly being complained about by players, and therefore, they're trying to put out cars that doesn't do it to make things a little easier on people. Now, I'm not getting a zero RPM drop, which I need, unfortunately. Unlike other cars, the old cars, you don't need it to run good. With this car, you need it to run good. So it, it's really kind of frustrating. 8.556 run on an 8.454 dyno is not good for uh, doing well in live, right? So you're going to want to, you have to beat Dino really for the most part to be competitive in live. Even if the alternative is possible, which is the alternative is simply having really high Evo points at a much lower performance point, which works as well. But in this case, it, it's kind of a difficult thing with this car to get everything just right because it doesn't want to. And therefore, you're kind of struggling. Now, let's go ahead and set it to max and I'll show you uh, fully maxed whether things change and again zero rpm drop with this car uh, it's all in the timing of the launch but it's a red line launch you kind of have to play it just right to get that so we're going to go ahead and max this car now fully maxed um, it is good enough to run uh, some, something like a 7.5 or 7.6, I believe. Dino is 7.64, so it's probably a 7.6 run. Maybe a high 7.5s if you really shift very, very well. But again, this is the fastest, second fastest, because the purple starts faster, but the second fastest right now in that championship showdown. But again, getting this launch just right is the trick. Now notice on that one, it bounced right to zero, and it came up really fast. You want to try to catch it at 3K and nitrous in second. Then it's all near perfect runs and boom, 7.63. Okay, slightly under dyno right there from 7.64. All right, so that's the good news, right? That will get you there. The problem is, as you can see, I've already struggled quite a bit to hit that situation until I got to fully maxed, in which case it seems to do it much easier. Um, Depending on the stage sixes you have, you're going to struggle to even hit dyno. Now, what about if I want this car to beat dyno? Is it possible to use this car in live in a way that it beats dyno? Theoretically, yes, it is possible. It's always possible, um, especially with dyno beating using grip. Most of the time, what it does is it requires you to set up the car where the balance of the grip okay, the nitrous and the power adders triggers what is essentially a Evo drop tune with almost any car. And not all cars in the game can in fact have this, but with almost any car and most cars, it is quite possible to find that magical spot, so to speak, where it will get a grip-based, substantial grip-based change in its dyno, which allows it to kind of run under okay so by lowering the engine the turbo and the intake we're now relying heavily on the nitrous to push this car's top speed in doing so you have the potential here of getting a nice run out of the car that may actually run under the dyno now notice i got the zero rpm drop real easily that time but the car tops out pretty quick right it gets stuck at that speed and therefore you're still running slower than dyno. 
However, if you launch the car differently, where it's coming off of a spinning start, and you push nitrous a little bit later to push that top speed beyond what is normally possible, or theoretically possible, like so, okay, you can, in fact, slowly push the car um, to run under uh, the dyno itself. It's going to be tougher, but it's doable. Now, this is not a dyno buster, in my opinion. This is a slight dyno beater using that strategy. And you can probably get it as low as the theoretical 9.9, .9, which is somewhere around here. See, it can go as low as 9.8, but by lowering this, you're giving it that 9.9. .9. Now, can you make this even more dramatic? Yes, you can drop another part and kind of tweak it around it to get a little more out of it. And this works with many cars, right? So I can theoretically drop another part, okay, which will drop this, drop that, and kind of put me at a more at the mercy of nitrous. So nitrous is usually the key when it comes to pushing the car well beyond its capabilities. And what you do is you look for a spot where you have a nice fat jump in Evo, which generally would mean a big dyno beating. However, even with this tweak, I'm not seeing that as a dramatic jump. Um, you got 10.496. If you put it to 2.0, it's a 10.675. But again, launching not off of a needle drop, but off of a regular launch and using nitrous in third can push you into a bigger gap with the dyno. And I got the needle drop, which means this is only going to be a dyno run. Um, so now it's the reverse. I don't want the needle drop. Um, I have to let go at the right spot for that. So I'm going to let go just a hair earlier so or later. So it doesn't do that. But notice that gives you about, again, a dyno base run versus if I can get it to come off on the wheel spin uh, and the nitrous third, I can get a better result. So let's do that. Okay second and third this will allow the car to be pushed all the way through on nitrous and therefore it puts out a bigger margin against the dyno of 10.6 right 10.675 i did a 10.4 something you can play with this a little bit to give it slightly more aggression um, it'll change it let's go ahead and take it alive for a quick run to kind of show that this is in fact recognized by the live lobby. That's assuming I can get signal. Let me see what's going on here. Oh, I have signals back. So that's just a uh, slight hiccup in the signal. Let's go ahead and take it to live. Now, again, something to keep in mind. This is not a high evil tune. So these cars with higher EVO at a lower uh, performance point than what I'm probably showing will lobby in an advantageous way against me. So these are going to be closed races, even if I do have a, lot, uh, a um, lobby beating tune uh, in the sense that I can run two tenths under, that two tenths can easily be compensated away by those cars with low performance point high EVO. Now, the Dodge fortunately isn't one of those cars and therefore i have a chance here to stay well ahead of them even until the end of the track because that car does not beat dyno easily either and it can keep things very close now i lost because i don't generally run in and try to run way under dyno but notice it already lobbied me up into the 10.4 lobby this might have something to do with the fact that i was running this car with the dyno beating tune for about seven eight races earlier let's give it another shot here this is again this car here gets a huge lobby advantage it actually lobbies about three tenths better than what its dyno says so again this is going to be a tough race for me even if i win so i'm not going to slow down i'll just go ahead and push the car through and let's see if i can actually win this because it's going to be a tough one okay so let's start pushing notice how far ahead the F5 is and it's holding its lead again I ran 10.4 that car on a 10.6 lobby can run a 10.3 
And I can tell you 10.277, I can tell you that's probably what it dinos versus what I'm dinoing, and yet it's in the same lobby with me. Okay. All right, so not getting the uh, full effect here, so I'm going to go ahead and go back and retweak my settings um, and see if I can't get a more recognized change in the dyno. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to remove these altogether. That I know will trigger a sufficient drop where I'm going to have a recognized dyno beating tune. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what the dyno says. 11.1 Now, mind you, I just ran two runs, two tenths under dyno. So this car, again, is not long-term extremely viable for live, even if you're beating dyno. There are other ways to beat dyno with this car, too. Um, you know, if you have pretty uh, fully upgraded car and you don't have all the fusions, it can also give you a pretty uh, strong position. But let's go ahead and take a look at the 11.1 cars here. So this might be a 10A car that I'm looking at. So the question is whether I can get this GTR to win this particular race, because so far it's been losing more than anything. Okay, so let's go ahead. And again, I'm pushing pretty hard here, and notice I'm barely keeping my lead. Uh, I'm gonna slow down. Let's see what he ran. Eleven one. So he's right on the uh, lobby. I'm right on the lobby and I slow down to get to the lobby. So obviously this is still, I mean, by retuning, I'm kind of in the right lobby here. Uh, that's not a dyno buster by much. So obviously that's a tough car to win with. Let's go ahead and take on this guy. This is an M5 competition. Another car that is kind of decent, but not easily a dyno buster. It's, it's not a terrible car by any means but I should have a decent chance against it as well. Once again, I'm not going to try to win these unless, you know, I have to go all out just to have a chance. I'm just going to go ahead and stay ahead, guaranteeing my win to about the end, and then I'm going to go ahead and slow down and let him have it. All right, so obviously I could have won that one. Uh, let's see what he ran. That's probably a 10.9 to 11 flat run for him. Yep, 11 0 run. So again, I could have beaten him. This car can run under dyno now, but it's not a great, again, a not a great setup for the car. So let's go ahead and go back to lobby. Again, I think I already bumped the car literally after six, seven races with that dyno setup, which isn't optimal to start with and certainly isn't the one I would rely on. The reverse is, of course, you can go and put the car to the highest possible EVO, okay? Um, right here and then take off something that'll lower the car down into say the a second type lobbies uh, for example you can take out that and that so what you're gonna do is you're gonna lose a few tenths to put yourself from 7.6 which will bump you into hypermax to the 8.0 hopefully 8.0 to 8.1 lobby which with there's some potential that you will be able to stay here. The thing is, I'm not sure, because I haven't tested this until now, I'm not really sure it's really that likely you're going to not face 7.7 .7 cars and lose. Uh, because when you're that close to 8.0, it's very easy to actually get tweaked up into the 7.7 .7 and faster group, uh, or 7.7 .7 range group uh, to 8.0s and still lose. So I'm going to go ahead and challenge somebody here um, just to see. Now again, this car fully maxed 7.9, 7.8. Uh, chances are that's what I am looking at here if he accepts the challenge, which he didn't, so I'm gonna move on. Let's see who we can find here. All right, um, I'll take this on. This is gonna be, that car beats Dino, obviously, so even if I can challenge him, which it looks like I can't, uh, that's probably going to be a loser. All right, let's try this guy. And it's refused. All right, let's try this gypsy guy. 
Uh, and Gypsy left. Okay. All right. Miguel Gorilla. I like the name. I'm going to challenge him. Another dino beating car uh, that I can't match to. Probably iOS. Okay. All right. Running out of options here. This is bad. I mean, that's a problem in this lobby. I can't seem to match anybody. Let me jump out and in again, see if I can find some people I can actually match up with. Right, different lobby, probably the same time range lobby, but, oh, okay, so this time he ex he challenged me. So he didn't want to refuse me earlier. Maybe it was not intentional. Okay, all right, now, so here, hopefully, we'll get the right launch. And we're going to run it according to the best the dyno says is the possible way, and we lose. Okay, that was about the best I was going to run it, 8.0, 7.9. So again, even with this setting, the matchmaking isn't all that favorable to this car. It could be, again, the result of uh, possibly already bumping it, but really what I'm thinking is that this car just isn't going to lobby that effectively overall. So it's one of those cars that is great, uh, fully maxed for the showdown, but once you get it into live, and unless you can find a sweet spot between this number and a high version of that number in a lobby on an edge, you're probably not going to do all that well with it. Um, another trick to, again, further bump it down would be to drop another stage six uh, because I can't drop the tune anymore. But then you would tune it up towards a slightly better. So you would probably want to drop something like this, add something in that compensates a little bit. And hope that you end up at 8.1. But again, um, these tunes are tricky because the lobby edge situation. Uh, so once again, this car at 8.3 uh, may or may not be actually all that competitive. And again, your tune isn't likely to get much better than this. So you're really relying on getting right to that lobby edge with the tune. All right, I'm not going to run that. I don't think I'm going to do that well anyway. All right, so that is essentially the stage six effects and a bit of an overview of this uh, GTR 50. So what's my final verdict on it? Well, not hard to build to stage five, not that bad at stage five, but long term speaking, there are just much easier cars to tune to beat Dino or cars that have very good low performance point high EVO settings that would be better off used than this one. Um, so again, another T5 Nissan that is not really the greatest. Um, so it's disappointing. I was hoping this will be almost like the T4 Nissan uh, in attack, being that it beats Dino a little bit naturally, and it's a pretty good car. This turns out to be, in my opinion, kind of a mediocre car that doesn't survive long in live. I may get surprised. Somebody may be using one of these in live for a year, but honestly, I doubt it. So if you have found a better tune, you found a s sweet spot for the car, and you want to share it, do so. Prove me wrong, and I'll be happy to learn. Now, that being said, once again, thanks to Spooncat for allowing me access to a fully maxed uh, GTR 50. Uh, feel free to comment if you have any questions. And if you uh, like the video, please leave a like. Uh, check out Spooncat and uh, his uh, Discord if you have any questions for him. If you like my channel, you want notifications when I put up these videos, then please subscribe so you can get those notifications. As always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.